Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to be covering group factoring. Now, to do group factoring, what you really need to know is how to do the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor plays an integral role in what you're doing with group factoring because when you're doing group factoring, you want to separate the group into sets of two, in which case that's why we call it group factoring. We're separating them into two different groups and factoring out the greatest common factor out of each set. Now, if you need any help with the greatest common factor, we have a video that supplements this one, which you can watch before you watch this one to get a full in-depth knowledge of how, what you're doing when you're doing the greatest common factor. All right. And now to begin this, we have four problems in which they go from very easy to very difficult. Our first sets, they begin with no leading coefficients and our last sets begin with leading coefficients. So it becomes a little bit more difficult. On top of that, we want to pay attention to the third symbol on every group factoring set because when we're factoring by groups we have to factor out the third sim the third sign of every set out of the factoring set that we're factoring and this makes an integral implication of what you're doing when you're factoring all right so let's start with the first one here as we separate our two groups and here we have this these two are going to be our first set and our second set now before we begin we want to make sure that they have common factors in each set Usually when you find a common factor within the two sets, if it's factorable, you'll find that both of the factors have something left over that is common between both sets. And so let's take a look at what we have here. In our first set, we have a AC plus 2AD, and the common factor in this set is just A. When we factor out the term of A, what we have left over is C plus 2D. And so we're looking to at least get the A or the C plus 2D in the second set. And so when we factor out our second set, we take a notice of the third term here. It's a positive. So we're going to factor out the positive symbol first. And then we're looking for the greatest common factor between BC and 2BD, which is just B. And what we have left over is just C plus 2Ds. And now we see that we have C plus 2Ds on both sides. And this makes it easy for us to do the last step. So we take the leading terms and we put them in their own set of parentheses. And we take over the common term and put it in just one set of parentheses right next to it. And we've just completed the, greater, the group factoring factor method for all four terms. Now let's take a look at this at this one because this one's a little bit different. Instead of just having all positives, we have two negatives at the end. In which case we're going to be factoring out a negative term for the second group set. First we're going to take a look to see if we have any common factors within the first two groups. And in the case you don't have any common factors, what you can do is rearrange your groups to see if you can find common factors for both sets. And so in this case, what we have, we have an X in common for the first group, and we have a negative Y in common for the second group, since the, the second set has negative, a negative term leading the third term. And so let's begin with the first set here, and we have an X in common. What we have left over is just X plus 15 Y's. And since the third term starts with a negative symbol, we'll factor out the negative term. And what they have in common is just y. And what's left over, instead of having a negative for the fourth term, this is going to become a positive. So here what we have left over after factoring out the negative y is just x. And after factoring out a negative y out of this set, we have positive 15 y's. And now we see we have the common term between both sets. And we take the leading terms and put them in their own set of parentheses and follow it by the common term, x plus 15y's. And we're done with this group factoring set. And so in the case when you have a negative term for the third term, remember that you're changing this, you're pulling out the negative and changing this sign to the opposite sign. Very clear and straightforward thing to do. Now let's make sure that this works out for us. We take a look at the first two terms. Do they have anything in common? We have 3x squared, negative 6xy's. They have 3x's in common. In the second set, we have 5xy's and minus 10y squared. And here we see they have 5y's in common. So let's see how this plays out. And we're going to factor out the 3x's from the first set. And what we have left over is just x take away 2y's. From the second set here, well, again, we're noticing the 5 from the numbers and the 10. And what they have in common is a positive 5, since the third term is positive. And the 5 is the number they have in common, and the letter they have in common for the variable is going to be a y. What's left over is going to just be x 
And to make this negative 10y, we multiply by negative 2 with a y. And so here we see again, we have the common factor of x minus 2y's and the leading terms, 3x plus 5y's, are going to go in their own set of parentheses. So we have 3x's, 5y's, multiplied by x minus 2y. And we're done with this set of group factoring. Now let's move on to the more difficult of all the problems. This has a lot of coefficients, has a lot of variables, it has the change of symbols. Let's work this out piece by piece, right? We take a look at the first two and the second two. What do the first two have in common? Well, this has a 2, this has a 6, so we know it has a 2 in common. This has HK, this has HN, so we know it has H in common. What's left over then? We have K plus, to make 6 with 2, we need a 3, and the leftover variable is just an N. In the next set, we see the third term is negative. We factor that out first. The numbers they have in common, 5 and 15, have 5 in common, and the letters they have in common are M and M. So we take out an M. And what's left over? We have K. And since this term is negative coming out the factor, this is going to change to positive. And what's left over from here to make 15, we need a 3. And the N is left over. So we bring that along and we have the K plus 3 N's on both sides. What we want to do is take this 2H, this negative 5M, join them together, right? So we have 2H's minus 5M's multiplying by the common factor, which is K plus 3n's. And there we have the group factor method. Now in a lot of cases we always often wonder if order matters when you're factoring and the truth is that order does not matter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra case here in which we see that order does not matter. And to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in two separate ways and I'm going to have 5mn's minus 25mk's minus 6 NP's plus 30 KP's. And the reason for this is a lot of times we get confused because we may think order matters but the truth is when you're multiplying order does not matter and the factor sets are the same even if the arrangement of the factors are different. And so we're gonna try to follow something a little more um, a little more proper where we're factoring out the greatest common factor first out of everything. And so again, we're going to look at both our sets, see if we have something in common. And in the first set, we have 5MNs minus 25MKs, which we have 5Ms common. In the second set, we have negative 6NPs plus 30KPs, which the negative 6P is what we're going to factor out of both sets because 30 is a factor of 6 and negative 6 with the P attached to it. So let's get to the work then. So here we have 5m's in common for the first two sets. And what's left over is n minus. To make 25, we need a 5. And the only thing missing would be a k. For the second set, since the third term is negative, we're going to factor out that negative. And we know that 6 goes into both negative 6 and 30. And so we're factoring our negative 6 out of both. And they both have a p in common. Now since the third term is negative, the fourth term is also going to be negative to make the positive here. And what we have left over then is just n. And this 30 becomes a 5 with a k attached to it. Now usually what I'm doing is I'm taking the first two sets and taking the leading terms and putting them in the first set of parentheses. But instead this time I'm going to take the greatest common factor and put it first just to show that it doesn't matter which order this is done in. So we're putting n minus 5k in the front because it's the common factor and whatever's left over simply by eliminating the first set and parentheses what's left over we can get the second set and this concludes everything you need to know about how to do group factoring all right